Well, I think we're going to get started. So um, first, I just want to give thanks for each of you being here. And um, we're thankful. We know it is uh, one of the most busiest seasons of the church year. So we're, we're glad that you were able to take this time and particularly for Nate um, being with us. So I'm going to share what he shares, which is that um, sometimes he goes by nerd pastor Nate. I, I, I hope, Nate, that that's not offensive, but I see that on your, your stuff. And he is pastor of the church for nerds, as he affectionately titles himself. Um, and Nate is a provisional elder in um, the Western North Carolina Conference, and he planted Checkpoint Church, the church for nerds, geeks, and gamers. Checkpoint is a digital first, currently digital only church plant that is taking root on Twitch, Discord, and on YouTube. And um, he is a passionate advocate for nerd and pop culture ministry. He is also pursuing innovative forms of digital ministry, worship, and tech-based discipleship. I was um, immediately after I, I learned about him in a, a group I was in, I immediately reached out to him. He responded right away that he'd be willing to come to EPA was so gracious. And then I immediately went on Checkpoint Church's website. And so I hope that you'll check that out, Facebook page. I don't know exactly where I went, Nate, but um, it was current. It was, you know, he was working with Squid Games at the time, which was the, the show of the week that week. And I loved how adaptive and how um, current uh, he was. I think think a lot of times, you know, the culture is dealing with something and we're way over here. And I love that checkpoint was meeting the culture, engaging the culture, um, and then offering Jesus. So, so Nate, it is a real gift to have you here today to hear your story. Let's just pause this morning and, and give thanks to God, and then I'll turn it over to Nate. God, every day is a gift, and so we thank you. And particularly in this Advent pilgrimage we're on, we praise you for um, in these days you are forming us and reforming us and calling us to be more and more like you. And so Jesus, as you went into new places and met new people, as you met people where they are, we thank you for Nate and how he is living out that call today. May we, um, as we listen to his story, may we be moved in our own discipleship and our own ways of reaching people right where we are in our local context. Bless this conversation. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Nate, we welcome you. Yes. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here um, and happy to be uh, presenting here. So I'm going to, uh, I'm a, I have a presentation that I'm going to show. And the basic structure that I want to go through today is I just want to kind of chunk it uh, in bits and pieces and have times for questions in between each chunk. So I want to talk about first who I am, kind of how this vision got started, um, what the inspiration for this thing was, what kind of inspired it, um, where we are currently. And then I want to talk about where we're headed and what I think that uh, regardless of if you are passionate about nerd ministry like me, um, or if you're just passionate about figuring out what does digital ministry look like, I want to leave you with at least some idea or thoughts or um, kind of ephemeral things to apply to your own ministerial contexts, something that you'll be able to utilize in your own context at best, because maybe you want to uh, write a Squid Game sermon, but maybe you don't. Um, and so I'm not going to assume that you do, but I'm going to be talking to kind of both audiences there because we do we do write weekly uh, devotional sermon like things. And this past Sunday we talked about Pikmin, and I'm going to imagine that maybe you know what Pikmin is, but probably not, right? Like that's pretty obscure, very video gamey. Uh, so we talk about a lot of random stuff, but we're reaching a very different audience than we're typically used to. So. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and we're going to get this presentation started. And like I said, there are going to be times for questions frequently throughout, and we're also going to be showing the video and all that good stuff. So I'm going to make sure that I get everything as I need to. I can't see anybody. Hang on. I want to make sure I can see folks. There we go. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, everybody should be able to see my screen. And this is first and foremost, just who I am uh, and why I'm, why I'm doing this. So I am a PK. My dad is a pastor of a, he was a second pastor of a church plant in a little town of Advance, North Carolina, which is just south of Winston-Salem. Um, one of the, one of the three big, you know, we have Raleigh, we have Charlotte, we have, you know, Winston-Greensboro area. So that's one of our, our big cities here. And then I graduated from Duke in 2020, which some of you may be saying that's way too soon. And I totally agree. 
I told the uh, church developer in our conference, I was like, I have this idea for a church plant, maybe in five or 10 years. He said, no, this is good to go now. And so I am in my first year of, um, of ministry as a provisional elder. I served as a student pastor during my time in seminary. So I'm technically in my sixth year um, of active ministry, but only my second year of full-time ministry. And they started me right away with a church plant. So they have a lot of confidence <laughs> in what I'm doing, maybe more than I deserve, but uh, I'm very flattered by them. I'm in the Western North Carolina Conference, provisional elder. Um, during my time in uh, seminary, I was a part of the Rural Fel Fellows Program here in Duke Endowment. Uh, that was through the Duke Endowment here in this area. And they basically fund uh, people to have a focus on rural communities. And I grew up in the rural communities so I have a real passion for it. Uh, some people have kind of had their, you know, butt heads with me on this thinking like, well, you can't do digital ministry in a rural setting. And I just couldn't disagree more. Um, while the internet may not be as accessible as it should be, um, rural folks are nerds too. Rural folks are online too, and they care about things that are digital. So this is just as viable of a ministry, whether you're in a rural context um, or whether you're in the big city, whatever it may look like. Um, I'm married to my high school sweetheart, Logan, and uh, I'm the dad to Nora Jane. Uh, she's our first daughter. We are expecting our second daughter um, this upcoming April. We're very excited about that. And so we are going to be, I'm going to be a girl dad to two kids, and then we are done. No more after that point. Um, and then last and most importantly, I'm a nerd, I am a geek, and I am a gamer. So I am all three of the demographic that I wanted to reach. And that's why it was so important to me that I do this, because I was a PK. I grew up in the church and I never felt that my nerd geek and gamer self was welcome. Uh, and maybe I was welcome as a person, but that part of me didn't belong. Okay. So the first question is why nerds? Why are we reaching out to nerds? What is the reason uh, that this needs to exist? The first reason is Comic-Con. Comic-Con attracts so many hundreds of thousands of people across the globe, across our country. There is a, over the summer months, there's a Comic-Con going on probably every single weekend. If you count smaller ones, I guarantee you there's one going on just about every weekend of the entire year. If you look at San Diego Comic-Con alone, it, it brings in numbers that would make Joel Olstein and Stephen Furtick both blush. So this is a big deal. It's attracting people and it is a community that is forming. If you've ever been to a Comic-Con or if you've ever been to any kind of convention, then you will see that there are a lot of people there and they all are brought together by what? Common interests. And so that first and foremost said, okay, I'm having trouble at my rural church that I was a student pastor at getting more than 30 people there. But the Comic-Con just up the road has no trouble uh, getting a couple, a couple thousand together. So there's a disconnect happening here. So why nerds? First and foremost, nerds want community. Second, this is a coffee shop in Greensboro that I went to for a while. It's called Geeksboro Coffee Shop. They have since closed down. And whenever they closed, that kind of sparked the flame in me that, oh, nerds are wanting community. Nerds are wanting something. So what can we do as the church that doesn't have to worry about closing down our buildings like Geeksboro had to because they just couldn't afford to pay rent? How can churches help with this kind of call in their own light? The third reason is because we're called to go after the one, not the 99. So nerds have not been reached. They have not been touched. They have not been connected. Um, there, are, there are small pockets of nerd ministry being done. Two of the largest um, are probably Love Thy Nerd um, and then um, uh, probably God Squad Church out of Virginia. Uh, Love Thy Nerd is worldwide, and they go to they go to cons across the across the country, and um, they actually spawned out of Game Church, which if you were in the convention scene about ten or fifteen years ago, Game Church used to go around handing um, a little Gospel of John. Uh, I have it somewhere, but it was the Gospel of John with Jesus on the front holding a PlayStation Four controller. So uh, they used to go around doing that and letting letting nerds know that Jesus loved them, and then they branched off into the digital age of Love Thy Nerd. So. These are my big three reasons. These were my reasons why that I got started and, and motivated to do this thing. So are there any questions about that? We'll, we'll, take a, we'll take a quick break about everything up until this point, about kind of what led up to this point, what motivated me to this point, um, and what, what I believe is the, is the place there. Are there any questions? I see we have a Pikmin Bloom. Somebody, Susan, plays Pikmin Bloom. Yes, are you enjoying it? I'm having a lot of fun with Pikmin Bloom for sure. It's a good time. 
And then our youngest met her husband play uh, playing cosplay, proposed to her in the middle of a battle on the hill. He first met her. Yeah. So that's like cosplay um, mixed with, uh, I'm having trouble remembering the, the name of it, but the live action role, LARPing, live action role playing. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. Nerds are everywhere and nerds are not just the people that are, you know, playing the Nintendo or playing PlayStation or playing Xbox. They are also at cons. They're also at Ren fairs. They're also um, playing D and D around their dinner table on the weekends. So, all right. If there's no questions, we're going to move on to the vision. So once I had this motivation, um, I went to our church developer. His name is Dan Pazette. Um, he's now a district superintendent in the West North Carolina Conference, but at the time he was the church developer. Uh, and I went to him and I told him this vision that I had for a church for nerds, geeks, and gamers. I said, you know, I don't know when this will be the right time, um, but I just have this vision. I told him everything that I just told you, but I think that these three reasons are reason enough that I want to plant a church that does this. And I got real nervous. He leaned over to me and he said, well, Nathan, what are your thoughts on Dungeons and Dragons? And I got nervous. I got anxious because satanic panic stuff is real. And I was like, I don't know what this guy is thinking. I don't know what he assumes, but I need to be honest. This is a time for honesty. And so I said, well, uh, to be honest, I play every Thursday night with my buddies from college. I host a D&D. &D. And he smiles and he says, I play every Sunday night. And so we worked, we clicked right away. He was a nerd. He was somebody that absolutely got this, got what I was doing, maybe was uh, in a different generation of nerd than I was, but was just as much understanding of the community that is possible through this thing. And so we began the process of actually visioning what this thing was going to look like. What did we want to achieve with this vision that we were going to pursue? And so we had a couple of goals and a couple of things that we knew that we wanted to do with this vision. And I'm going to go through those. The first one is that we wanted it to be familiar. And so odds are, you know, at least one of these arcade cabinets. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if you've ever seen or played a video game or had children that have seen or played a video game, you at least have heard of Mrs. Pac-Man or Pac-Man. You've heard of Galaga. You are familiar with these things. So the first thing that I wanted to do with this vision, I wanted to make sure that what we were doing was familiar to these people. I wanted to make it familiar and known. And so that means that I need to be talking about things that people are talking about. So they needed to be uh, trending topic, something that people knew. The second thing is that I knew I wanted it to be cutting edge. So I needed it to be as, as, as new looking as it could be. I needed to be snappy. I needed to be well edited. Um, if you go to our website, you'll see that it's, you know, very well drafted and clean and modern looking. That was something that was essential. We always need to be on the cutting edge of what we're doing because that's where the nerds are. They are looking towards the cutting edge. There's a reason why people, uh, you know, don't like certain streaming platforms and do like others. Peacock is not as cutting edge. And so people don't like it necessarily as much. Um, but Netflix has to stay on that cutting edge. They have to look new and hip. They have to update constantly. So we wanted to be more like Netflix, less like Peacock. Then third, we wanted to be community driven and community focused. So first and foremost, the first thing we have to do, we have to make sure that we're reaching out to build community. It's not about the sermons. It's not about the worship service. It's not about any of the other stuff. So we started the church from the very bare minimum, just community. All we want to do, first and foremost, is find the people. Um, we're not going to try and pull the wool over anybody's eyes. We're not going to try and be sneaky about it. But we want to make sure that rather than worry about, okay, are we talking about scripture? Are we leading a Bible study? Those were not the important questions we were asking at the beginning of the vision, but rather, are we building a community? Are we meeting new people? Are we making disciples for Jesus Christ one step at a time? So that was our foundational vision. And these are just the three things that we built upon at the very beginning. So are there any questions about that vision in general um, or what kind of led up to that point? Alicia says they play D&D every week and Scott is a game creator. Very fun. Yeah, I'll talk more about game creation in a little bit. All right, we'll move on to how it's actually being done. So now we've kind of gotten all the preliminary stuff out of the way. And now you get to hear the actual stuff you want to hear, the juicy stuff, the good things that are being done. So whenever we first started, I didn't know... I didn't really know much about what I was going to do. And so I took the entire first month 
and just purely experimented, um, just purely thought, researched, read papers, read books, um, talked to people that were in this sphere, people that I wanted to reach, and really worked from the ground up to make sure that I knew what I was doing, how I was doing it, and where I was going to get started with this thing. The one thing that we knew from day one is that we were going to stream. We were going to live stream. We were going to stream to people, and we were going to stream on a platform called Twitch. Twitch.tv is the streaming platform that we utilize. It is known for being for gamers, but it is not strictly for gamers. Um, this, is, this is just kind of the, the first step um, of streaming for gamers. This is where everybody kind of goes. Um, YouTube streaming, Facebook streaming, they're all kind of the same idea, but this one is just a little bit more, uh, already has the built-in community. So we wanted to tap into where the people already are. Uh, and so we created this Twitch channel and we've learned a lot. It's changed a lot. It's evolved a lot. We stream every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for two hours. So we're streaming for six hours a week, and that's pretty small. Most streamers on Twitch are streaming upwards of probably eight to 10 hours a day, um, at least three or four days a week. So we are we're very much on the, on the minority of length, but we are just trying to provide a space for it to be we are not trying to be professional Twitch streamers. We're not trying to be, um, you know, the next great viral hit, but instead we're trying to create community on Twitch. So that is to say, that's our goal with our first method of Twitch. That is our outreach. If you think of it in church planning terms, this is the coffee shop where we go and we meet people in the community. This is purely a step where we meet people where they are. A couple of hallmarks of what we do and some things that we've learned here is that uh, specificity is key. So knowing what you wanna do on certain days will attract different people. So on Mondays, we stream from one to three in the afternoon Eastern and we stream Pokemon. No matter what, we're gonna stream something Pokemon related. I am a big Pokemon nerd. I like everything about Pokemon. I love all the games. I could play it for hours and hours. And whenever we first got started, it was dangerously becoming close to just being a Pokemon stream. And I didn't want that to be the case because we're for nerds, geeks, and gamers, not for Pokemon nerds. So Mondays, we limit ourselves to purely Pokemon. Tuesdays at one o'clock, we play whatever. It's a variety stream. We'll do anything, everything, people, whatever they want to do. It doesn't even have to be a game. It can just be chatting. It can be uh, an art contest. It can be Minecraft. It can be whatever we want it to be. But Tuesday is open-ended. Wednesday night at seven always is a game that we invite people to play with us. So whether it's Super Smash Brothers and we invite people in to play online or Mario Kart and we say, please come play with us or Minecraft and we have a Minecraft realm that's open to everybody. That is the step where we let people in to the community to play along with us on our stream. If they get to know us, they can even join our voice chat and they can actually be on stream with us. Um, but at that point, we need, to, we need to make sure that we know them and that we feel comfortable with what they're doing. So I wanna give you just a quick example of kind of how this has evolved and what I think are the highlights of our stream as, as it happens and as we're doing it currently. So this is, our, this is our Monday Pokemon stream that we had, and this is the VOD. So this is after the fact that it's already happened. This is the recording that we just posted. But I wanna focus on these points throughout the video of how I think these things are being done. So a couple of things that you'll notice, we're just gonna watch little bits and bits and clips. We're not gonna watch the whole thing because it's two hours and that would put us way past 11 o'clock. Uh, the couple of things that, that you'll hopefully notice is that it's chat oriented. So rather than uh, just have time where I'm talking at the camera, everything that I do is in interaction with those that are watching. Uh, it's not like a service where I am preaching at people, but instead this is an opportunity for us to just engage in community with one another. The second thing you'll notice is that it's relatively unstructured. Aside from what's happening on the screen, there is nothing happening uh, within the conversation that is limited to anything. Anything's on the table, we can talk about things, we can do whatever we want in that space. The third thing is that it's responsive. Um, I will respond to every comment um, as best as I can, as long as I don't miss them, I'll make sure that I respond, I talk to them, I engage them in that way. Supportive, that's something that I'll skip to towards the end. The community itself has become supportive of each other. And so that's a culture that we've kind of embedded from the beginning. Uh, we follow, before you can even chat, we follow the three general rules. So we've, we've kind of adapted uh, the ordinances of God. So we say, you are going to do good. You're going to do no harm. 
and you're going to strive to grow in this space. Those are our three rules. And so that has kind of created a natural culture within the community that has uh, allowed for a community that is supportive of one another. It's also very lighthearted. We typically don't talk about heavy subjects, but if we do, we're very welcoming of those subjects. We're welcoming of one another. We're welcoming of our ideas. So I'm going to start this and just clip through uh, to some of the moments during this stream, just to give you an idea of what these streams kind of look like and how we're treating them. So here we go. And I might. So we start every stream, welcoming people in. What is up? Happy cozy stream. I'm making some apple cider as we speak. I can't help it, you guys. I just want apple cider. Tis the season. So as people start to roll in and we start to get the conversation going. Quite a range. Cool nights. A sarcastic work of art. It's an excellent game. Highly recommend it. A lot of fun. Uh, may have even won some awards. I feel like it may have won some awards. Uh, anyway, definitely a game you want to check out. I actually put it on there for a pretty specific reason, because not too long ago, I think it was in general or it may have been in question of the day, I discovered that one of our own, Christina or Rinku, had not played it. And so I was like, oh, well, perfect. I'll put it up for, for the giveaway. So hopefully Christina will, uh, will try to get it. All right. As people started rolling in, we finally got into the game right around this point. And you can see this is the chat bar over here. So these are the conversations that people are having as we're talking. Left off. I've officially um, another another gotcha. Bump, ba -dum, bump. You guys can see I'm in the trade center now, and that is because I uh, I traded for my evolutions. This is one of our members has just redeemed their viewer points. Right, we're gonna turn off yeah, our turn off a spoofy. Uh, I have a little candy machine right behind me that you guys can see spoofy. back here, and they can redeem. To use the candy machine, and there's different things in there, like some of those gross, like uh, Bernie Bot's jelly beans that are nasty uh, flavors. Good, good, a piece of paper. Woo! Random things Woo! that people can use. Now, I should have you maxed out at two gotchas a stream, I hope. If I don't, then what am I doing? Watch, you know what it's gonna be is the community points. Oh, you get to read a page from my book! Oh, that's my favorite one. Of all of them, that's my absolute favorite. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We got there we go. They it. redeemed a challenge there, and they get to hear a page out of my book that I wrote whenever I was 10 years old that's very cringy. And uh, it's a fun time. They always enjoy it. But what I really want to highlight here is, so do you see this just random conversation? It's people redeeming rewards. It's people talking, enjoying the game. We're playing Pokemon in the background, but nothing really uh, particularly serious is happening. But then at one point, I want to try and find, um, we had one of our members... Uh, named Zando, who popped back in. This was this this was Monday, which was the same day as the Michigan um, school shooting. And Zando hopped in at one point. His nieces go to that school, and so he hopped back in just to share with us that he was having a distressing moment, that something was going on in his life, and that he was he was distressed in the moment. And what I want to highlight. If I can hopefully find it. What I want to highlight is that whenever he came in, the entire community hopped to his aid. Well, of course I can't find it, but that is a, that's an example of we're playing Pokemon. We're in, you know, we're playing this ridiculous game. We're doing gotcha. We're having um, people pull out, you know, the nasty jelly beans from the back of the candy machine. We have all this random stuff going on. And then one of our members comes in and mentions that a tragedy has just happened in his life and everybody instantly changes and supports him, loves him, lifts him up, says we're praying, just, just make sure he's okay. Make sure everyone's okay. Asking all the questions and doing all the things right. So it immediately shifted in that conversation and live helped him in any way that they possibly could. So that's just kind of the structure and the way that we've been doing this. It's two hours every day. If you would have told me that uh, 
this would have been the way that church was being done, that people would have been um, watching me for two hours whenever I had trouble getting my congregants to listen to 15 minutes of a sermon and they want to watch me play Pokemon for two hours, I would have laughed in your face. But this is the truth of this community is that they just want to be together. And so we stream for six hours every week. And most of these people that are on this stream right now with me are there every single hour of every single week. Um, they welcome people in, they bring people in, and they hang out. Um, and so this is the space where people are. And anybody that says, oh, people just don't have the time for church, this is what proves it's malarkey, right? They do. We're just not interesting. <laughs> we're just not bringing them in. We're not doing the things that they want to come to and attend. And so if we're in their space, if I'm in that space of Twitch, then we're going to reach those people in that way. Uh, it's up early game. Okay. So now, the second way that it's being done is through a platform called Discord. And I will preach Discord uh, as long as you guys will have me to preach about it because I am the big Discord evangelist. I think that Discord is the future. I think that Discord is the way that church should be done. Um, I think the way that it is the way that digital community will happen. So what is Discord? If you have a Facebook group, that's the gist of what a Discord is, but it's just much, much deeper much more customizable uh, and, and a, a more, I don't know how the, the word exactly to use, but it just kind of, I always have Discord up on my computer. I'm always looking for people messages and it's more engaging and welcoming than Facebook has been in the past. So Facebook is you know, trying to make a buck, whereas Discord feels, it feels very uh, raw and, and tech heavy. It's overwhelming at first, but once you build it, it's something really incredible to use and to look through. So Discord is my preferred platform. I just want to show you some of the things that we're doing on it and how we're using Discord. So this is just the example of what the Discord looks like. Um, yes, you can. You can stream on Discord. You can voice chat on Discord. You can video chat. You can uh, stream the games that you're playing. You can play games with one another. You can do everything that we're doing on Zoom, uh, all that good stuff you can do through Discord. So I can, I can do a whole walkthrough of Discord and I, and I have um, with UMCOM, so United Methodist Communications. I have two, I have a Discord 101, how to set it up, and a Discord 102, what to do with it once you actually get it set up uh, and ways that you can use it. So just kind of some words, some keywords that I wanna highlight of how we're using Discord. Discord is an opportunity for guided conversation. And this is true across the board, by the way. Um, whether you're on Facebook, if you have any group community building platform and you just assume that they're, the community is going to run it, um, then, then you're, you're missing a real opportunity. You need to give people a reason to be in your group. So it has to have some form of guided nature. We ask a question every single day of the week. Uh, Monday through Friday, we ask a question in our question of the day channel over on the Discord. That in and of itself encourages people to be in the space at least once a day. And so if they log on once a day to answer that question, they're going to see all the other highlighted messages of people talking throughout the day. They're going to go check them out. They're going to continue the conversation. But if I don't give them a reason to be there every single day, they're never going to check it. And so now it's become second nature. Uh, people are just there all the time because I've worked hard to build that culture. But if you don't guide it, um, then nobody's going to have a reason to go to your group. So that's the first thing about digital community is that it has to be intentional. Um, it will occur naturally, but you've got to at least give it a little kickstart. You've got to give it a little fire start to allow for people to engage in conversation. After you do the guided part, you also have to ensure that there is an open part. So it doesn't need to be so guided that nobody can comment on anything ever. They need to just be able um, to kind of shoot the breeze and to talk about whatever they want to in whatever space they have. So we have open spaces as well as guided spaces on our Discord that allow for both sides of the community to be affected. Responsive, if it's on my Discord, I respond to it. That's pretty much end of story. As the pastor, as the leader of the community, I'm going to respond to as many messages as I am humanly capable of doing. Um, as long as it's not at three o'clock in the morning, I'm going to respond with my thoughts, my comments, what I think about this, or, or at least build up or, or something like that. So it's, it has to be a responsive community. And if you encourage that as the leader, your members will also do it. They will be responsive. 
Same goes for supportive. Um, if you encourage a culture of supportiveness, it's going it to just bleed into the rest of your culture. So the more that you do it from the get-go, the more that people are going to do it as they join in and as they have received it. We have a whole channel on our Discord called the Welcome Channel. Every single time someone joins our Discord, it puts their nameplate up and it says, Welcome, bleep borp into the Discord. And then once they enter into the Welcome, all of our community, well, not necessarily all, because that would be really intimidating, but we probably, we probably have 15 members of our community that hop into our welcome channel and say, welcome, hey, and they send gifts and they, uh, you know, say, welcome to the community. We're so glad you're here over and over and over again, just welcoming every single new person. Um, now, if you're anything like me and you served a traditional church, then you're lucky if you get two greeters, right? You definitely can get your one greeter and maybe they'll, maybe they'll take a vacation a couple weeks of summer, but Imagine having 15 greeters. Now, that might, imagine overwhelming the people that walk through your door with so much love and welcome. I mean, that is a, that's a goal uh, for all of us, I'm sure. So it, it, it starts from the beginning. As long as you encourage that supportive culture, you'd be surprised how people that haven't had this community are willing to really embrace each other once they find someone else that's a part of the tribe. Um, it's a warm environment. So that's kind of what I'm talking about with this picture in particular. Um, this is a question that we ask over in our Let's Get Spiritual section. So a lot of our conversations are nerdy, but we have one section of the Discord in particular that's more for these harder, heavier spiritual topics. And we've started asking questions there every week. So I mentioned, right, we have this thing going on with this school shooting in Michigan. It's an absolute tragedy, something that I'd never considered affecting me because I don't live in Michigan. I don't know anyone in Michigan. I don't have any family in Michigan. However, now, a member of our church family not only lives there, but has a member of his family impacted by it. Okay, so now it's gone from a tragedy that I hear about on the news to a tragedy that I'm living in my group, in my community. Uh, and so we had to respond to that in some way, shape, or form. And so we asked a question this week. We responded with our newsletter uh, just to share love and to support um, Zando as they've gone through this. And so the question that I asked isn't, you know, how can we support Zando during this? But instead, I kept it open-ended and I said, we're a community. How are we supporting one another given the global reach of our community? We're not just dealing to local tragedies, but we all have local tragedies that we're dealing with all the time. And now they're a part of our lives. So how can we respond to that? And so it encouraged this conversation uh, between the, you know, these three leaders here in our community that just talked about this and, uh, you know, talked about how can we support each other in this community and they lifted up ideas and thoughts. And so what I want to point to you then next is what's underneath each of them. So you see Zando's comment there at the top and then underneath it's got this like little box, this little gray box with a blue outline that has a heart with a five next to it. If you're familiar with Discord, you know what that is. If you don't know what, if you're not familiar with Discord, that is just like on Facebook, how you can like something that is somebody has reacted to that comment. And so five people reacted with a purple heart, which is kind of our, our symbol because we're our color is purple here at Checkpoint. And so that is the reaction of, we are affirming this statement. We love this statement. Our hearts are going out to this statement. And we had five people do that. And so that's the kind of culture that we've created of people don't feel the need to even respond and say, that's great, Zando. Instead, they just react. And Zando knows that they are loved in that comment and in that statement. And I can say personally that I know whenever I've made a good statement or a bad statement because of the reactions, because of the people that react to it. And I do get a visceral reaction whenever I get more reactions, whenever I get more love, more hearts, more laughs, more whatever it may be. It's an encouraging thing to receive. And so we've created a culture of reaction, of, of response, and of supporting one another in a warm way. Um, I also want to point out that it's emotive, so it's it's moving, it's constantly um, in motion, we're always talking about different things, and by that I mean just like the transitory as well. Um, we talked about this very serious thing for three or four messages there, and then Nikki Turner, Nikki Turner down there, brought back a conversation from earlier where I was making a joke about, she's our editor, I was making a joke about how I used to edit all of our videos and how much better they've gotten. So we've moved from this very serious conversation um, about tragedy in the global community, and then somebody brought back a kind of funny statement. So we've, we've, we've within the same space, moved from a heavy conversation to a lighthearted conversation. And so what does this look like in our context? This is the fellowship hall. How many times have you been having a potluck and you're, you know, just absolutely, um, you know, just gabbing, talking, hanging out, enjoying one another, whatever it may be. And then 
the conversation gets darker or it gets a little bit heavier or somebody shares something personal and that needs a prayer request. And then after the prayer request moment is over, you go back to talking about something fun. You go back to laughing and enjoying one another. So this is kind of our fellowship space where we can go back and forth in these different areas and allow for conversation, natural, organic, healthy conversation to occur within a space. So that's Discord. The third area of how it's being done is over on our on our um, YouTube channel. This has been our most recent one. YouTube, we are working on um, sermons. So this is kind of our first step of discipleship, where we allow for people to get their first little taste of, of Jesus, whatever that may be for them. So we assume we assume that they have no relationship with Jesus. So every video, what we're doing is we're relating some topic to Jesus. So we're bringing some kind of current zeitgeisty thing like Squid Game, like Don mentioned earlier, and we're relating it to something new, we're relating it to the, uh, the, the Jesus thing of some scripture, some theme, some moral, some way that we can live our lives better. I want to show you a quick example of that, and then we can get to questions on these three things, because I know this is a lot to throw at you all at once, uh, but these are all good things, I promise. Well, there we go. So this is what our sermons look like. Again, I'm going to jump around. This one is definitely significantly shorter, but I want to point out some of the things that are kind of essential about this. If you're creating an hour-long worship service, I'm not so sure you're reaching new people. Um, an hour-long worship service is for your existing community to be able to watch distant. If you want to reach new people, it has to be shorter. Um, it really has to be short as can be. These are just the sermons. They are 15 minutes. They're well edited. They're fast paced. Um, they're funny and witty and relatable. So they're talking about things that are people will relate to. So we're just going to watch, watch a couple bits here and hit some of the highlights of what this video looks like. This is our latest sermon from this past Sunday. Uh, yeah, you did read that title right. We are straight up talking about Pikmin and Jesus today, and that is hilarious to me. Words cannot describe how much I love this church. If you aren't on the bandwagon for Brickman Bloom, well, I'm frankly not too surprised. It's a pretty obvious cash grab for a revisioning of the phenomenon that was Pokemon Go, which is simply never going to happen again. But there is a distinct difference between Pokemon and Pikmin. And it's not just their flower head appendages because, I mean, Chikorita, right? But we as Christians and just as plain old human beings can actually learn something about the way we serve others by the way that Pikmin serve us. Curious? Me too. Let's talk about it. Folks, welcome to Checkpoint Church, where nerds, geese, and gamers come together to talk about their faith games. And okay, I understand that these are vicious mushroom dogs and stuff, and that these are frogs, but what are these supposed to be? Seriously, I am your nerd pastor, Nate. And if you like these weekly deep dives, then be sure to sub, hit that bell, and find out when our next one drops. Folks, as always, we're going to be beginning with our scripture. This is going to be from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 5 through 13. I'm going to be reading through the NRSV. That's what's going to be on the screen if you'd like to follow along. Or if you'd like to use your own translation, that is just fine as well. Let's hear the words of Jesus. I you can see there's smooth editing already, um, and we're not apologetic. Right from the get-go, you are at a church. We are reading scripture. Um, we're not going to try to pull wool over your eyes. Yes, we're talking about Pikmin, but we are very much um, a church for nerds, geeks, and gamers. Now I'm going to skip forward. First, we talk about, I break down what is Pikmin, what is Pikmin all about. We do smooth editing there. Then we talk about what is Pikmin Bloom in particular. And then I'm going to talk about why are we talking about this game. Anyway, the reason I'm bringing up this game and why I think it's relevant to our Christian walk is one of the features of the game. As you work with your Pikmin, sending them on journeys, having them walk alongside you, having them help plant flowers with you, etc., etc., each thing that you do together builds up a heart meter of four hearts. It's kind of Harvest Moon-esque, really. After you achieve those four hearts on your heart meter, your Pikmin comes to you specifically and is like, hey, dude, we're buds, right? Would you mind if I just ran home real quick and got you a present. And then they just straight up do. It doesn't matter how far away their seed pod that you picked up was, they will walk 500 miles just to be the man, to be the man that winds up at your door with that specific present. As a quick aside, I'm actually going to San Diego from North Carolina this upcoming January. Okay, so that's, that's why we're talking about it. And then I'm gonna relate it to our actual scripture. So Jesus has been absolutely clear. How should we build our relationships? We first keep a relationship strong with Jesus. How do we keep that strong relationship? We love like Jesus loved. And how did Jesus love? Jesus loved others by sacrificing for others out of love. 
It is a direct equation going on here. It is a cause and effect domino thingy going on. If we want to be the branches on the vine, then we have to love one another because by loving one another, we are loving as Christ loved. And the act of loving as Christ love is what keeps us in love with Christ. It's the- there you go. That's that's the kind of overall theme and everything that it does. With the, and then I relate it back to Pikmin. And then I always close them the same way with Okay, maybe you didn't get anything out of this relation, but here's what this actually means. Here's how you can actually, actually apply it. Mean for us today, right now. Well, first off, again, add me, Pikmin Bloom, over on the Discord server. Go ahead, please, please. I need you. I need you. Uh, but after you get done doing that, consider what it means to really serve someone. How can we better love those around us in the same way that Jesus would? It doesn't actually mean doing laborious chores for them like the Pikmin do, but Jesus sat down at the table and ate with the sinners, even if he had somewhere else to be. That's called sacrificing time. And it's just one of the ways that we can learn from the sacrifices of Jesus. The truth of Pikmin Bloom is that it teaches us that our most important thing we can offer and sacrifice is our time. How are we spending our time building relationships? Are you spending all the time you have just by yourself or doing the one thing that only edifies yourself? These things are important, but in order for us to stay connected to the vine for true living water and sustenance, well, we have to get ourselves out there and love others. Jesus wasn't a recluse, a weirdo, an outcast. Sure, yeah, but a recluse? No, Jesus was with others, loving others, sacrificing for others. And if we want to love like Jesus, then we have to be too. There you go. So that's kind of the idea of quick, snappy, edited. Um, It's still a sermon. It still feels like a sermon. It still has the scripture there. Uh, It is doing something. It's relating a message to a theme and it's having notes and highlights and all these things, but it's not doing that at, at the, at the expense of, okay, well, we need the prelude and we need a space for the offertory for the people that are there present and all that stuff. But instead it's just the video, it's just edited and it's just there in people's um, purview. And so that's that's just an example of how we're doing that and how we're using YouTube uh, to kind of relate scripture to the nerdy themes that we're talking about. So before we get to level two, I'm just gonna open up again for questions. So uh, I'm gonna go to the chat first while you guys think of any questions. Um, This is exactly a Fresh Expressions movement that started out in Florida. I'm bringing it here in the community in PA, says Catherine. Very cool. I highly recommend the book, A Field Guide for Methodist Fresh Expressions. So I'm I'm innately tied with the Fresh Expressions movement for sure. We aren't technically, but I know a lot of them. Luke Edwards in particular is in our conference, um, and he's somebody that I work with uh, a lot with this kind of stuff. I think that what we're doing is very much um, a fresh expression, but it's also not in its own special way. So we're working together um, in a lot of different ways through what that looks like. There are a couple United Methodist expressions of this um, and of, of this kind of nerd ministry and, and geek ministry. So I'm always interested in learning more about them and getting plugged in with them too. Off the top of my head, there is another streaming group, Methodist Gaming um, out of Virginia. And then there is um, uh, Crossfire Faith and Gaming out of Colorado. So, you know, just right there, there's already, there's already two. And you said there's another one in Florida. I'm sure there are so many um, that are, that are being done. And so that's a part of what I'll talk about whenever I talk about how we can apply this thing to our own churches is that I think that the collaborative nature of the internet is going to be essential um, for all these people that are doing this. John asked, please tell us about the name Checkpoint Church. Checkpoint was the name that was just discerned and prayed over at the very beginning. The thought process behind it is that within video games, in between point A and point B, you're going to have checkpoints along the way that'll save your progress in a video game. And so in order to get to all these different places, you have little stops along the way. And so we see what we're doing as being kind of this journey of grace, right? We are, we are this area up along your journey of grace and along this path of grace where you can be who you are and who you're going to be as you grow into a relationship with Jesus Christ and community. So we see it as being this checkpoint along the path, uh, and we want to help you on your journey as you go towards the eventual goal uh, of perfection and relationship with Jesus. So that's where checkpoint kind of comes from, and the logo is the little pin drop um, from a GPS. Uh, Alicia says, I've been praying that the Lord grabs my son in love because he is a natural leader, but his family turned against him against religion and even God. He's a brain tumor survivor, quite a story to tell in due time. He needs a space like this. The Lord works in mysterious ways doing a new thing. Catherine, huge board gamer and computer gamer nerd. My husband uses Discord a lot for Minecraft. Yeah, Discord is, it. it's very well known. If you know a nerd geek or gamer, they're going to be on Discord. And so that's a part of the reason why I push it so hard is it's worked really well for me because of the fact that um, nerds, geeks, and gamers are already there. They already exist in this space. 
Alicia and Lee also use Discord and talk about playing games with family. Susan, are there ever conversations by your people about wanting to get uh, together in real life? Yes. And so that's something that's important um, as we talk about the path forward and what we're doing. We had an unfortunate article written on us by, uh, by a particular magazine that said that we were only ever going to be digital. And that's not the case. Uh, while we are digital first and while we are digital minded and while we think it's important that we are digital, that doesn't mean that we never intend on ever doing anything embodied ever. Right. I mean, we, so we, uh, the model that's been there since the beginning is that what I, what I have a vision for is to be like a Comic-Con that then goes back. So once a year, once we get the critical mass necessary, I want to have a Comic-Con like thing where our community gets together um, and, and meets and celebrates and uh, takes communion and does baptisms and has worship together and plays games together and does all that stuff at like a convention center or in a hotel lobby and that kind of thing. So that's, that's, that's a place where that looks like and how that looks like. And yes, that conversation is happening amongst our level two, which I'll be talking about next. Um, we're planning on having our first kind of trial run of that this upcoming summer um, as we figure out what that looks like. Alicia asks, is there a space for nuns? I would say there's not only a space for nuns, but it's almost um, just been who we've, we've reached. Um, a lot of nuns and a lot of duns, uh, a lot of people of the, of the LGBTQIA plus movement, um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people who are just needing a space that haven't felt welcomed in church before. I would say we're reaching three groups. The first group that we're reaching is we're reaching the nuns and duns. We're reaching people that haven't been welcomed in church before. We're reaching people who are either in church for the first time or have been hurt by the church in the past. That's our, that's our probably primary group. That's the group we're aiming for. And that's the group that we definitely are reaching. The second group we're reaching and the one that surprised me the most is probably a third of our group is made up of United Methodist and beyond clergy um, or clergy spouses. So, so many members of our group come out of this they are already pastors. They are serving churches, but they don't have a place where they can let their geek flag fly. And Checkpoint is allowing them a space where they are able to be their geeky selves. Um, and so, you know, on some levels, they have conversations with me that are along ministerial conversations. But for the most part, we don't talk about the ministry. We don't talk about their churches. We don't talk about their preaching, but it allows them to have a place where they are being served in a community setting. Um, so very fascinating to me is that we're, we're providing a space for clergy um, to, to experience and, and embrace that, that part of themselves because their church might not understand that. Um, and then the third group that we're reaching that has surprised me is a lot of um, high schoolers, a lot of high schoolers and middle schoolers uh, and kids who are just in that space and are kind of figuring out what it looks like. And I, I, I mean, it, it makes sense that we would reach those people, but I just hadn't even considered that we'd be reaching a lot of younger folk. And they're kind of our more mysterious group as we're trying to figure out what that looks like and, and how we can relate these groups together. So that's our three big, three big groups that we're reaching. Um, and yeah, we are definitely reaching a space. We're definitely creating and reaching nuns just because of the fact that we are willing to have spiritual hard conversations, but we're not going to force anything down anyone's throat. And currently how nerd ministry is being done, especially on Twitch, um, is by very forceful evangelical um, streams where there's a, there's a lot of fire and brimstone. There's a lot of Bible reading. They just, they pull up scripture and just read from the Bible for two and a half hours, which is, you know, sure. Yeah. Read from the Bible. It's good to read from the Bible, but um, odds are you're just reaching the ears that want to hear that. And so we're, we're trying to create relationships um, from the ground up and doing that. We've reached a lot of nuns who, Hey, you know, I, I haven't been to church in years and this, this says church, but it sure doesn't feel like the churches that I've been to. So they, they kind of lean into that and feel comfortable in this space. Lee asks, how do you engage in communal service projects together? It's a great question. We haven't had the capability to do that with our size, but we're finally reaching the size that that is possible. So we have two ways, that one way that we've been doing it, sort of, and then the other way that we're planning to do it. The way that we've been doing it is every quarter we do a checkathon charity stream. So over on Twitch, charity streams are very popular. Um, they uh, typically happen when I want, the big one actually just happened in November, uh, where they normally do a, a big, a big, huge um, charity stream 
for Extra Life, which is a, a ministry that, well, not a ministry, but it is a, it is a ministry. Um, it's not a church ministry, but it is a, um, a charity which provides gaming equipment, video games, and different things like that for kids that are in um, the cancer ward uh, or that are in, you know, children's hospitals or something like that. So people raise a ton of money for that particular thing. So we've been doing that every quarter. We have done a uh, checkathon charity stream, which is longer, significantly longer than our usual stream. So normally our streams are two hours. Our checkathon is eight hours and we do an eight hour stream and we try to see how much we can raise within that amount of time. We've set the goal at 500 both times. We re reached 600 with our first one and we raised $600 and some cents for uh, extra life. And then our second one, we raised like $400 for Child's Play, which is a very similar organization doing something awesome. And so that's been how we've currently done communal outreach. But a big goal that I have and I've expressed to our level two members, which I, again, I'll talk about soon, um, is that I don't want it to just be about money. I think that the big issue with, um, and I'll, I, this will kind of answer Susan's question as well. The big issue that I have with a lot of giving and a lot of those things is that typically it can just be throwing money at a thing rather than embodying the mission um, and actually doing the mission for ourselves and, and, and affecting lives and building relationships through the service that we offer. And so we've been wanting to move past just doing the charity streams. We don't want to, we don't want to stop the charity streams because money is important. Money is needed. And sometimes a charity just needs your financial support. So I'm not saying we ever want to stop doing that, but we do want to consider what does it look like for us to do mission? And so we're going to be experimenting in 2022 with a mission program where we will come up with something pretty universal and ubiquitous, and that can be done anywhere. And then we're going to encourage people to do that mission during the month and post their pictures, post their how many people they affected, post everything that they can in a channel on our Discord. And then at the end of that month, we're gonna accumulate all that stuff together. And we're gonna to put together a celebration video about how from across the country, cause we are across the, we're across the globe really, but across the country, how have we made an impact? How many people's lives have we touched just in our own local spaces? Um, and we'll do meetups if people are near each other. So, you know, we have a lot of people in North Carolina just because that's where I'm at. And so we'll have a North Carolina meetup where we'll do missions together. We have a ton of people over in, in the, on, on the West side as well. We have people in Arizona. Um, we have a ton of people up in the kind of New Jersey, Pennsylvania area. We have a lot of people in Virginia. Um, we, have, we have people all over. And so we're going to encourage them to get together and to do these missions and to post them into the Discord so that we're celebrating each other's missions even though we're across the country. So that's kind of how we're going to experiment and see what works, what sticks, what doesn't um, as far as these mission projects. We've, we call them monthly missions, but that may be a bit much. I think that maybe we'll do them quarterly as well and just kind of see how they go or maybe not even put a time parameter on it at all, but just experiment with it a couple months. And that leads me to Susan's question. Do you ask for an offering? No. We do have a space where we, um, we have giving uh, on our website. So we have like a, if you want to give, you can give through our planning center. We do not currently ask for an offering and that's intentional for a couple of reasons currently. Um, Twitch in particular already has its own offering. So within the Twitch platform, people have the ability to subscribe so they can follow you and then they can also subscribe and a subscription costs $5. And whenever you subscribe, you pay that $5 and you get extra things from that channel. You no longer have to watch ads. Um, you get access to emotes. You get access to different things um, within the chat. You can engage better within the chat and you just become a deeper, more embodied member within the group. So that money goes directly to us. We, uh, Twitch, of course, takes a cut. But in our partnership, uh, we're actually Twitch affiliates is what we're called we are able to collect money from Twitch. Now it's nothing drastic. It's nothing uh, huge. You know, we're making literal pennies on the dollar for ads and then we make 50% of every sub. So 250 for every sub and we have about 20 subs a month. Um, so slowly but surely, right? We are, we are making a small offering uh, just through our Twitch platform alone. Anchor is our podcast app. We're also putting advertisement on some of our podcasts. We don't put them on sermons, but we put them on, on some of our podcasts and we get a little bit of kickback pennies on the dollar there as well. Um, we have a game plan in the coming year to start something very similar to a Patreon, if any of you are familiar with that platform. Um, just another, another way for people to support. Um, but I don't know if a traditional offering where I just, you know, have a time where we, we set aside and we ask for people to, you know, this is our time of ties and offerings. That just doesn't exist in our space. 
But the reason that we haven't done that yet, or at least haven't done anything like that yet is because I wanted to make sure that I was laying the foundational work for our tithing to be true tithing and stewardship and not to just be giving money. Um, I just think that too many, too many churches fall prey to that or have had that embodied in their culture for hundreds of years. And so from the, from day one, I want to make sure that we are very clear on this is stewardship, um, not fundraising, not, you know, this is, this is not just financial throwing things, but this is stewardship. This is being good stewards what we've been given and we're giving into this thing um, so that it can continue doing. So that's kind of the idea of what we've got and how we're going. Fortunately, um, we're able to do this in a really slow way because we do have conference funding um, for five years. We don't have full funding for five years, but we do have conference funding from Western North Ghana for the first three years. Uh, and then it kind of backs off the fourth and fifth year. So we have time to kind of figure out what to do and what that looks like. And so now that we've have leadership, which again, going to get to level two. Now that we have leadership, we are able to start focusing more on this and more on what offering will look like and how funding will be possible. So that, those are a couple of our platforms. I think the future of digital ministry in particular is going to be, um, you're not going to have one pot of money anymore. You're going to have multiple streams of income coming from multiple different areas. Uh, and so I'm, I'm intrigued to see what happens. Uh, funny enough, we did get a, a sponsorship offer uh, recently over on Twitch, which was, which was hilarious. So we'll see. We, uh, we did not take that one, but it's something in the future to consider. Um, if you're familiar with YouTube or if you ever watch YouTube ads, it was for Raid Shadow Legends, which gets memed on pretty hard um, because every Twitch streamer, every YouTuber ever does an ad about them. So um, we're officially big enough to be scraping the bottom of the barrel of the funding bucket. John asked, what are the costs involved in supporting this online ministry? Very interesting um, for this ministry in particular is that there's actually pretty, pretty little overhead. Um, you know, we don't have to necessarily sustain a building. We're in a warehouse that I'm working out of, but it's about the cheapest office building I could find. And it's just because I couldn't stay in my um, guest bedroom any longer. But this is just a place where this is what we're paying for. I mean, this is all. It's, it's, it's my salary and it is this building. Uh, we already have all the equipment. Um, there's occasionally some equipment, um, you know, things that need to, needs to be updated or we need new games. Uh, but for the most part, with digital ministry, once you buy the stuff, it kind of just pays for itself. Uh, and so the actual overhead of this ministry is, is fairly low. Um, website hosting, uh, if you're, if you're going to host anything, that, that costs a little bit a year. But for the most part, digital ministry is very affordable. Uh, and a lot of it is free because you're the product, right? I mean, that's the idea of Facebook. And so we can kind of exploit that in our own ministries and say, okay, well, if, if, I, if, if I'm going to be the product, then I'm going to get to use this as well. And so we can lean into those free resources as much as possible. Uh, and I'll talk more about how we can lean into each other in that way later. I'm going to take a pause from the questions. We'll have more questions um, here after I kind of explain what, what's next. So level two is our most recent thing that we got started with. Level two is our leadership program leading via leaders. What I would relate this to in your um, context is this is our members. So we're not chartered. We do not have membership yet, but this is the first step towards membership. So all the people, all the places that I've talked about, Twitch, Discord, YouTube, that is all stuff that I see as a service. Um, I am offering content. I'm offering community. I'm offering these things and people are taking them, right? Level two is the first thing that we've done, and we started it back in August, where people get to affirm, okay, I'm ready to no longer just be served by Nerd Pastor Nate and by Checkpoint Church. I want to start serving Checkpoint Church. And so people fill out a form. They let me know that that's what they want. They let me know that that's what they've discerned, and they join our level two program. They get uh, higher levels of access on our Discord. They get asked more direct leadership guiding questions where we talk about harder subjects. And they're also invited to what I call our reunion, RE colon union, um, where we talk about uh, the things that are going on. They get access to our analytics. I talk about goals and plans and where we're headed and what the future looks like. I let them in on ideas and I ask for their opinion. Uh, they're a part of the assessment process. They're a part of all of these different things that we think about our administrative council, our PPR chair, all that stuff. I'm letting everybody in on that place and on that area. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing at this point. And this is very much the first level. This is very rudimentary, um, but it's just allowing for that first step towards leadership to be taken. Uh, this, is just, this is just level two, so it's just the beginning. We have a whole lot more um, that's going to be coming forward. 
And this kind of completes our current iteration of our discipleship pathway. And so I want to show you guys what that looks like. I consider it a funnel um, because I see it as being the biggest down to the smallest. Even if it's not in actuality by numbers this way, this is what I'm in doing intentionally. So what I see as our number one area where I want people to meet us. So maybe they meet us in other ways, but this is where I want people to meet us is through our Twitch. That's, what our, that's our coffee shop. That's where I meet people. That's where I want to meet new people. That's where I want to, for the first time, get to see them and hear their names. Then I point them towards our Discord. So that's going to be our next smallest level of our funnel. Discord is our community. It's our church building. It's our fellowship hall. It's where we say, okay, I came to your space. Now you come to mine and let's get to know each other in this, in this place. And so that's what our Discord does. After that, and this is, this is strange, but after that is YouTube. So a lot of people meet us on YouTube, but that's never my intention. YouTube is after you get to know us and after we know that you're interested in learning about Jesus, then we're going to push you towards these sermon videos where we're talking about these things, where we're dealing with this kind of rudimentary faith. So this is, you know, if, if you do discipleship, this is your Bible study. This is that first level um, of somebody getting to meet you and know you um, on a spiritual level. After that, we are encouraging people to join level two. So once you've been served, once you've met us at the coffee shop, joined us in our fellowship hall, started to hear some of our sermons. After that, we ask, would you like to start serving this community too? And that's what level two is. The future, I don't know. I don't know what that holds. We have one current thing that we're kind of working on that I'll keep kind of in the bag. Um, but if you follow us on all of our stuff, I'm sure you'll hear more about it um, as we continue to progress. Let's just say 2022 is going to be uh, a very big year. We've got a lot planned for the future. But I'm going to leave this up um, just for any questions, because I think this is, this is probably one of the key things um, that we've developed this year in particular is this discipleship pathway. So I'm going to go back to the comments or the chats here and, um, and uh, respond to these questions. If you have any other questions, feel free to type them and then we'll move on to some things that I'm currently seeing, what the future holds, what I've learned. Uh, Lee asks, what do you think of platforms like Faith Life? I'm not familiar with Faith Life. Let me, let me look that up. Um, I'm going to see what exactly that is. The only platform that combines time-saving apps with discipleship resources and logos. Okay, so it's through logos. Um, I think there's a lot of different platforms like that that you can use and that you can make use of. But again, I think that if they cost, if they cost money, that's probably better because you're, you're paying for a product rather than becoming the product and being served ads. So I think there's a lot to those kind of things. Uh, as far as discipleship stuff is concerned, there are a lot of things out there that talk about nerd ministry, but typically they're not written from a Wesleyan perspective. Um, and so a lot of the stuff that I'm doing with discipleship, I feel like is kind of best made in-house and we're figuring out a way that we might be able to produce that for others to um, share in. So we're working on making some like the sermon that you watched earlier. We're working on making some of that stuff more available and guidable for churches that are interested in doing something like what we're doing. Um, but yeah, we, we don't necessarily make use of any third party resources as of yet. Alicia says leaders for campuses. That's a goal that I have for the future, for sure. I want level two to start taking over more things um, and start kind of um, owning different areas. So we have some members um, who are super into Discord that I think would make natural leaders over on Discord. And so I can kind of take a step back uh, and allow them to kind of be our Discord liaison, our Discord leader there. We can have somebody over. We have all the tangential groups. We have Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. So maybe we can have somebody over our Facebook group. Uh, we can have somebody over our Twitter group. So those are kind of our virtual campuses. Uh, we also have a plan for the future where um, members of our level two or our leadership will stream. So it won't just be me streaming, but rather we can have different people streaming every day of the week. So they're just continuing to build into that culture and community and prove that this isn't um, a one-man show, that this isn't some kind of uh, cult of personality, but instead that we're creating community that is building within something. John Coleman, you just said what I was going to ask. What's next? Is there a cultural sense of constant innovation of nextness um, that's important to this form? Um, yeah, there, it's, it is. It's constantly future-focused. It's constantly... Um, moving forward and figuring out what is the next thing. And so I'll talk about some of those things that I see um, as far as where we're headed in the future. Alicia said, can gamers just check out your YouTube first to make them curious? Absolutely. And so that's why I say this funnel is weird. Um, this is just our intended discipleship pathway. To say that it is the only pathway or to say that it is the best pathway even um, is not fair. We've had plenty of people that have just found us on YouTube. We've had people that have been recommended to our Discord. We've had people um, that may never have even watched us on Twitch. Uh, and so this is just the intended way 
that I'm reaching people. Um, just because if we didn't have a focus, then I worry that we'd get distracted. And so this is kind of the order that I try to think about things as we build and improve and evolve, right? We are, we are constantly thinking about, I'm not worried about Facebook, right? I'm not worried about Twitter. I'll post things on Twitter and Facebook, but my focus every day, my brain is on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, level two. Those are my focuses. Like having those, those actual points of interest is going to be key and essential for digital ministry. Because if you're just constantly trying new things, um, then you're not really going to be trying anything deep enough. Tiffany, how did you first get the word out about your church and have folks enter your doors? Uh, that's just through internet discoverability and conversation. So um, things like this are helpful uh, because I'm hoping that some of you that are here today will have somebody in mind. Um, the more that I talk to people, the more that I hear the phrase, oh, this sounds like the perfect church for fill in the blank, my sister-in-law, my niece, my cousin, my best friend, my whoever. And so hopefully you will get the word out uh, by doing things like this. But organically, we are reaching people on Twitch by playing different games. So there are some people that love Pokemon. Um, people love Pokemon cards. I'm sure you've heard about that on the news, right? I mean, people are, are absolutely, you know, storming the doors to go get Pokemon cards because they're being scalped so hard. And so we'll have some streams where I'll just open Pokemon cards and we'll meet a whole new audience of people that are interested in watching somebody unbox Pokemon cards. Um, or with the game together, sometimes people will invite their friends to come and game together. Um, or on, on Tuesdays, we're currently playing through the, uh, the Game Awards is a pretty like national game award convention for game developers in the country. And um, we're playing through all the games for impact. And so that's my favorite genre of game just because I think it's what, what I can preach on. It's, it's, it's what sermon fodder is. And so um, we're playing through those games and people are going to have an interest in just talking about those games because that may be someone's favorite game and they want to watch somebody play it for the first time. And so just allowing for uh, that, that first open the door moment. And even though Twitch doesn't have the best discoverability, it does have some discoverability. And uh, we just, we just wait, we just keep building. Um, yeah, the internet is a, is a baffling place. And the algorithm is a really frustrating thing. But the more you can know about SEO, the more you can know about building things on the back end, the more you can know about tagging things properly, um, experimenting with the internet side of things, um, that's going to be essential for how you're actually going to get the word out beyond things like we're doing right now, where I'm meeting people and telling them about this and hoping that they tell their friends and their family, um, knowing how to build it correctly. And so that's why I would almost even, even double down. If you're going to start a digital ministry, um, and you should find your platform and learn everything you can about that platform, Google, YouTube, ask all the questions, learn all the things, because you need to make sure that you understand exactly how to use that thing to the fullest potential. Um, most platforms will give to you if you do that, Instagram in, in particular. If you want things, this is, this is, yeah, this is gonna be getting into my internet mogul side. If you want people to find your Instagram, you need to be using Instagram Reels. You need to be using Instagram Live. You need to be using your stories. You need to be using the little story saver, the little bubbles that happen on the bottom of the screen. Everything that Instagram offers, you better be using because if you use it, they're going to promote everything. Uh, and they're going to encourage your, your account because you're maximizing the potential of their outreach. So if you give to the platform, the platform will give back to you. So that's just general advice with digital ministry. Learn everything about the platform that you can. Use everything about the platform that you can. If you're on Facebook, if you have a Facebook group and you're not using the teachings you know, plug-in where you're able to set up little Bible studies and things like that, you need to get on that. If you're not live streaming once a week on your Facebook group, you need to get on that. Um, these are all things that are going to tell Facebook that you are an active group and they're going to promote you more. So those are all the different ways. That's, that's just kind of the general internet advice that we can get to um, maybe at the end, whenever we have just kind of open questions. Um, okay. So this is our current trends, just to kind of let you have a peek under the hood of what Checkpoint is doing right now. Remember, I mentioned our three big platforms, right? These are our three big areas. So uh, Twitch, we have 730 followers. Um, that does not mean we have 730 people watching us at a time. Um, that's a nice thing to tell my, you know, district superintendent, um, but that's not the truth. We do not have 730 people watching us at a time. 730 followers mean that 730 people receive an email whenever I go live. They get a ping on their phone whenever I go live. Um, and so, you know, three times a week, every week, 730 people are willing to put up with that ping and either swipe it away or click and watch. Uh, 
And that's what that number means in particular. This is a hard number to achieve. Um, I'm excited for when we finally reach a thousand. Um, you have to, so you have to have at least 50 followers to become an affiliate. Um, and you have to have at least, I think it's like three concurrent viewers. That's three people watching at the same time. Um, and in order to become a partner, which is the next level up, we have to have, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember. I think it's 75 concurrent viewers. So currently we have about, we have about 12 concurrent viewers. Um, so our, our total community is probably about 30. Um, but given the, every individual day, we only have about 12 people watching us at a time. It's growing slowly, but surely, but that's kind of where we're at. Um, over on our discord, we have 153 members. That's a little bit more true to form. We probably do have like 60 or 70, maybe 50% of those members who are active. Um, not necessarily active every day, but at least active once a month. Um, and then we probably have about 40 members that are active every day. Uh, and so we have 40 people that are joining our Discord that are entering into that place every day. YouTube, we have 216 subscribers. Uh, that's probably about 25% um, active. We probably have about 50 views on every video uh, that we put out there, 50 to 100 views at most. And then if we post something particularly exciting, we'll get much more. Um, if we post something that people will share, then we'll get drastically more. So we did one on Midnight Mass for Halloween. For any of you watch that show, it's excellent. Um, if you are, if you are able to stomach horror, I highly recommend it for the preacher because it is a very important show for the church. Um, but we got, we, got, we nearly have a thousand views on that one, um, just from people sharing it. And then level two, we currently have ten leaders. Um, my piece of advice with level two, for me at least, was that I was scared to pull the bullet, and so I didn't. Pull the, pull the bullet there. I, I refused to pull the trigger and to um, start level two until August. But whenever I started it, I was like nervous that people weren't going to join. And pretty much within a half hour of me posting the link to join, I had two people that had already messaged me and they said, why did this take so long? Why is this just now getting started? I would have joined this months ago. So that's kind of what I learned about the level two is that I expected us, I expected us to have maybe three leaders by the end of the year and we already have 10. Um, and it's still just December. So we still could have more members before the end of the year. So that's huge. The other numbers are just kind of our tangential ones. Remember, those are our big four. So those are the ones that I care about within our funnel. On Facebook, we have 324 likes. Twitter, 527. Instagram, 220. TikTok, we have 2744. That's because of one particularly viral TikTok that I made uh, with Pokemon. Uh, but that that's a whole other a bird of another color. If you want to talk about TikTok, you can ask me a question about that. Um, our AC, that's our anchor podcast. We have 26 monthly, uh, or not monthly, but listeners to every episode. Um, and then our newsletter, we have 165 people that I send out our newsletter to. If you'd like to get on our newsletter, that's on our, our website. I'd be happy to include you on that. I include a lot of these kind of things weekly, every Wednesday on that. So that's kind of our current trends. I want to talk about where we're headed. So this is kind of our future of what we're doing. Um, level two is gonna take a lot of shifts this year. We're moving forward with level two and figuring out what it's gonna look like and how we're gonna evolve and how leaders are gonna to continue to be formed. Um, the, the middle thing with Mike Perna there, that's a podcast that we host called The Nerds of Prey, uh, P-R-A-Y. And that is a podcast where I sit down with nerdy ministers and people that are in this place. Uh, and I just kind of introduce them because like we've already found through the chat, right? With, with Catherine there said that there is a, there is a nerdy minister out of Florida that's doing this thing. And I didn't know about them. This is the podcast because we need some kind of connection. We need to let people know that these people are out there. So I'm, I'm sitting down and interviewing nerdy ministers and talking to them about uh, what nerd ministry looks like in the future of it. The third thing is actually the sweatshirt. So that's, um, we just actually started a game development studio called Ludo Good, which Ludo is gaming and then good. So literally it means gaming good or game good. Uh, and that is what we're, what we're trying. We created a video game for Advent, which was insane and very exciting. Uh, we've had a, a huge turnout with that. We've had... Um, over 300 people play our game, which is exciting. If you'd like to play the game too, feel free. We're releasing it every week for Advent on Itch.io. Um, you can find that on our website as well under, under Ludo Good or under gaming. Um, another thing that we're doing in the future is the Checkathon is going to continue evolving. We're going to continue doing that every quarter um, and figuring out what the Checkathon looks like. I'm looking at maybe extending it a little bit, doing longer Checkathons, maybe like 12 hours. Um, but those charity streams have been a lot of fun and they really cause a lot of growth within the group. And then that last picture is continued. Uh, that's one of my nerdy sermons, thumbnails from our YouTube. And we're going to start doubling down on our nerdy sermons and start taking a step forward with Bible study. So we're going to move those nerdy sermons from being just videos that you watch to videos that you watch together and then talk about. Um, so that's kind of our next step towards what does worship look like for us? We might not have music at that. We might not have 
uh, you know, a prayer circle. We might not have tithes and offerings, but we're going to figure out what does it look like for the community to come together and watch a video rather than to just watch the video asynchronously. So that's kind of the future of where we're headed. And then I want to talk about some of the things that I'm learning, but first I'll, I'll take any other questions before I get to what I'm learning. So any questions about the current trends for Checkpoint or where we're headed in the future before I talk about just some of the overall things that I think you can apply? Maybe I should, I just realized we only have 15 minutes. Maybe I should go over these things and then just type any questions and, and we'll answer questions after. Um, so what I'm learning, the things that I've learned over the past year and a half of this, and that I'm still learning them. That's why I say learning, not learned, um, because I am still learning every single day. I'm learning that collaboration is key to the internet. Um, and collaboration is the only way we're gonna make this thing work on the internet. Uh, we have a incredibly blessed opportunity in the United Methodist Church via our connection. And I think we need to exploit every single connection that we have. We need to uh, embody every connection we have. Um, I, I don't want to speak for Don, but I'm pretty sure that the way Don heard about me was through uh, UM News um, posting an article about me. And I was flattered. I was honored. Um, and also, I was asking myself, why is there not more of this? Why is UM News not posting every exciting thing ever that we're hearing about? Why, why did it take them, you know, over a year um, to hear about what I was doing? And they still haven't posted one on Crossfire. They still haven't posted one on Methodist Gaming, right? I'm not shaming UM News. They're doing all the work that they can. But we have this connection in the United Methodist Church. We need to be exploiting it. Um, Rethink UMC is doing a good job with that. Um, UMCOM is doing a good job with that and reaching out. Um, but that just needs to continue happening. And that is, the, that is the essential thing is that we have to collaborate. We have to build one another up. Um, one of the things that I was told whenever I first got into church planning was get ready. You're about to make everybody mad. You're about to be, you know, the, the rumor mill. Everybody's about to be talking about you on the campus and talking bad about you because they're either, um, you know, scared that you're going to come take their members, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I want to talk to that in particular. We have to collaborate because the internet is so huge that there is literally no way I'm going to take your members. <laughs> First off, uh, you know, that's just not what it looks like because we don't even have a Sunday worship service. And, and another thing is, is that we're taking pastors. We have elders, we have deacons, we have uh, local pastors that are a part of this congregation. We're not taking them from their churches, right? We're just allowing a space for you to be geeky in your faith. Um, and so that kind of thing is going to become essential as we continue to do digital ministry. We do not have to all reinvent the wheel, but instead we should be sharing each other's things. We should be encouraging people to watch others' videos and to download others' apps. Everyday Sanctuary is an app that I um, would encourage you to use that's just a meditation-based app if you're familiar with Calm or if you're familiar um, with um, Headspace. It's that kind of thing, but just kind of a journaling daily app. I'm not going to create that. I'm going to point people to my, my friend Abigail's app there, right? I'm just going to tell them about that. That kind of collaborative effort is something that we absolutely have to do. And I call that cataloging. And what that's kind of what Nerds of Prey is. So where I'm talking about all these different nerd ministers, I'm highlighting them and I'm writing about them. So if you have a, if you have a blog on your website, if you have a place in a newsletter where you talk about things, Try talking about other churches. Try talking about other ministries. Try, try highlighting exciting things that other ministries are doing um, because we have this connection and we should be utilizing it. Uh, and that's, that's what I, I think is the future. Innovation is key, kind of like what John was saying. We always have to be next-minded. Ideation is key. If you don't have somebody that's good or gifted in ideation in your community, find one. Um, that's my own personal um, leadership gift, but that is something that... Um, I think is essential. You got to have a lot of ideas. You got to constantly have new ideas and be trying something new and then find someone who's able to evaluate it. So evaluation is not my spiritual gift. Ideation may be, evaluation is not. So being uh, able to find someone that's able to make sure that you're being uh, well evaluated, that you're doing the things you need to do, and then also coming up with those ideas. Another thing that I want to talk about is the tribe. If you've never read anything by Seth Godin, first off, I highly recommend it because Seth Godin is the bomb. He's so good. But he has this idea on tribalism, which is something, right? That's a no-no word. That's a red flag word, tribalism we don't like. But his idea of the tribe is this phrase, people like us do things like these. So rather than worrying about excluding anybody, include people via that phrase. People like us do things like these. So Checkpoint Church, we play games. So people that play games are going to want to play games. Uh, and we're going to do things like that so that we reach those people. 
So knowing your knowing who you are and who you want to reach is going to tell people, hey, that's something I want to be a part of. Uh, it's not tribalism in the sense that we're excluding people out, but instead we are embodying who we want to be so that people know what they're getting into. So that's a that's a great, I would recommend anything by Seth Godin, but especially his concept on, on the tribe and people like us do things like these is super helpful. Another thing that I've started practicing is the 12 week, 12 week rule. That's just my rule of thumb for how long I'm willing to try something. So um, rather than say, all right, I'm going to try something every month for a year, that's too long. If something flops, you do not want to be doing it for a whole year. Uh, 12 weeks is about what I've found on the internet seems to be the trustworthy number. If you try something 12 times for 12 weeks, um, then you are, you are odds are going to either reach an audience or not. And so set, set goals, set what you want. If it's a viewership or if it's a interactive or uh, whatever your goal may be, some of my goals, one of my goals in particular was for a game. We, we did a thing called the uninstallables where every Tuesday I would host people or I would, I would play through a game on my backlog and I would give people uh, the opportunity to vote on whether to continue playing the game or uninstall the game. Nobody voted. Um, it didn't matter how many watches I had. It mattered that people were participating. And so since people didn't participate, we cut it. We no longer have that thing. Um, being willing to cut something is going to be incredibly crucial for digital ministry. You've got to innovate and you've got to cut. Uh, and then being future minded, the three questions I always ask myself and I ask our leadership in level two is what's going well, what's good, um, what do we need to adjust, and what do we need to bring back? So I don't ask for things that we need to kill or can. Um, we're just doing that naturally. We're doing that on a 12 week rule. We're not asking ourselves, does this need to end? But instead we're just ending things. And then we're, what we're asking ourselves along the way are positives. What can we do better? What is good? And what can be, what needs to come back that we miss? Um, and that kind of keeps that life cycle fresh and alive. Okay. With that, I'm gonna answer. I see another question from John. If we have any other questions, we have nine minutes. So I'll answer as many as I can answer in nine minutes. Um, and that's my contact, contact information. Like I said, we are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if you want to DM me over there. Um, Discord is always going to be the best way to reach me, but that, that link is a little bit tricky. Um, and then you can email me at checkpointchurch.gmail.com. Any of that stuff, I'll leave that up on the screen while I answer these questions. Uh, John, besides level two, do you have or might you start a helpful users group for leaders embarking on this exciting form of ministry? Yes. Um, Nerds of Prey would probably be the best way that I'd recommend getting plugged in. That's where I'm talking about digital ministry in kind of a real raw way. Um, you know, a lot of things that go on within Checkpoint, it's, it's typically more spiritual, it's typically more community-based, it's video game driven, but Nerds of Prey is the one place where I kind of uh, allow myself to um, be a digital minister. I would also encourage you to Facebook the group Digital Ministry Hive Mind. I'll type that in the chat. Digital Ministry Hive Mind on Facebook. If you search for Digital Ministry Hive Mind on Facebook, I'm an admin. I will add you. That's a group of over 200 members that we have on Facebook where we are constantly talking about things like that. We're hosting Clubhouse sessions. Um, we're, it, we're sharing each other's projects. We're sharing each other's ideas. We're talking about new things that we learn and innovative projects. So um, join that. I'll let you in. No problem. Uh, Lee, how do you balance your time and resources over, uh, over your platforms? That is the, the essential part of that funnel. Having those four platforms is totally manageable. Having all the platforms in the world is not manageable. I learned that the hard way. Um, I tried to post every single day on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, um, different engaging questions. And I learned quickly that that led to burnout. Even with Buffer, even with a, a time scheduling and, a, and an app scheduling platform, it was still too much. Too many people to engage with. All the platforms are different and they need to be re related to in different ways. And so I told myself, if we get an audience on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, great. They're bulletin boards. Nothing more than that. Um, the ways that we're engaging and interacting with people beyond the bulletin board are Twitch, Discord, YouTube, and level two. That's, that's essential. And we have to, we have to be cutthroat about that and just be real about it. Other people are doing ministry well on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I don't need to be. Susan, why is TikTok different than other platforms? TikTok is the most insular platform I've ever experienced. Um, TikTok is incredible. Their algorithm is amazing. The way that they learn who you are and what you want to watch is baffling. Um, they have absolute, they are, they, are, they are a big deal for a reason, right? Everybody knows TikTok for a reason. If you have a TikTok, you know, account that is doing well, that's awesome. Odds are you've had trouble moving people from that account to your other platforms. And that is because TikTok doesn't want you to move people from their other platforms. For, for people to find your things, uh, you have to have a TikTok account that is set up as a business, and then you have to add your link tree or some link, your website link into your account. 
nobody's clicking on your account. Nobody clicks on your account because TikTok doesn't want you to. TikTok wants you to keep swiping. And so they're going to show you an inter inter interesting video, a short video, and then they're going to have you scroll. Um, they have no interest in people following you beyond their platform. So they're going to make it as difficult as possible to leave TikTok. Um, and so while we may have 3,000 followers on TikTok, um, they, don't, they don't count in my mind. There are people that I can reach and there are people that will watch my videos, but they do not count towards what I'm actually doing because there's no interaction and they're not indulging in any of my three uh, or my big four, right? They're not on Twitch. They're not on Discord. They're not on YouTube. They're not joining my level two. So they are another bulletin board. Um, and they are, they're ones that I, I, would, I would interpret does not work very well. Uh, just because the bulletin board, what purpose does a bulletin board serve if it doesn't point people towards what you're actually doing? Um, so I'll use TikTok every now and again, just like I use Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If I have time, I'll create some TikToks, but those are never going to be my focus. My focus are Twitch, Discord, and YouTube. Any other questions? We still got five minutes. I want to be able to offer up all of the, all the thoughts that I have. I mentioned earlier, UMCOM. Um, they have two, two, two webinars that I created on Discord, if you're interested in learning more about that. I'm on podcasts everywhere all the time. Pastoring in the Digital Age is a podcast that I've been on a couple times. Um, I'm on the Rethink Church podcast, which is called um, the Compass podcast. I'll drop these. Pastoring in the Digital Age, um, Compass podcast. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? I think that Pastoria is doing some really unique and interesting ministry. Um, that's somebody that is um, has been in the in the spaces of the conference and has been in the kind of episcopacy of the church and then left it to tr start this thing for pastors. So Pastoria's main goal is to equip you as a digital minister. They want to mentor with you. They want to partner with you. They want to work with you um, and help you become um, a better digital pastor. So that's what that space exists for. Those are just a couple resources. Is level two where it becomes a one-on-one -on -one with you? Do people ask for personal counseling? Great question, Susan. That's awesome. Perfect. So um, level two is a space where it becomes one-on-one, -on -one, but it's not. It's typically not the first. So where I know, and this is just my metric, where I know that I've made it, where I know that I've I've officially reached a space with with folks, um, is when they turn on their video camera. So we have a lot of things. We have a lot of stuff that we do. We do a lot in the chat. We do a lot with uh, text. But whenever somebody joins a voice chat that we do, we try to do voice chats pretty regularly. Whenever somebody joins, that's a big step. Whenever somebody joins with their video camera on, they are comfortable, they feel welcome, and they are a part of the community. That is the metric. Um, at least for us in particular, that is the big difference. And that's how we know uh, that they, they are officially considered this kind of their church home. This is a place where they feel welcome. So level two isn't where it starts, but it is where the leadership starts. Where's Pastoria? I can't find other than definitions. Uh, let me see if I can find his website real quick while I look that up. Do people ask for personal counseling every now and again? What um, is Pastoria.co? Pastoria.co. He's just starting, so he probably might not have his SEO really built up yet. Um, I have a Calendly that I have set up for coffee with the pastor. And I would encourage any of you that if you're interested, if you're, if you're wanting more, if you, want, if you have more specific questions about your context, feel free to take advantage of that as well. I have 15-minute sessions while, where I'll sit down with you and um, we can talk about uh, nerd ministry or, or whatever passion you may have for this thing. So if you're interested, um, check out my Calendly. I can drop that in the chat real quick. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and then I can drop that in the chat as we kind of wrap up. Nate, I just want to uh, give thanks. This has been such a gift. That's right. I've had in a long time at one of our camps, and I was so thankful um, the call didn't drop and I was able to hear you. This is going to be a gift for our conference. I'm going to turn it over to John Coleman, um, who is live, and, and you can see his video as he wraps us up today. Here we go. I just dropped okay. the Discord link. Feel free to join our Discord, and I dropped the Calendly if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one with me. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Nate, Nerd Nate, and thank you all who attended. Um, and uh, we, Nate has allowed us to record this event. I want to listen to it again. Um, I was listening and not taking notes, but uh, in fact, we may even see if we can do a transcription of it for those who'd rather read some of these ideas and everything. And I think we might be able to also um, 
I may also copy the uh, the chat uh, as well because there's some good stuff in there. Uh, I hope that uh, you all will uh, benefit from this, look further into it if you're interested, and definitely share it with others once the recording is available. If, if anyone who has not attended this or didn't know about it that you think might be interested in, hope you'll share it with them. We have to find more ways of getting stuff out like this out beyond us, and then hopefully some folks will get back in touch with Nate uh, to see how they can learn more and connect with others who are doing this. Uh, really hope we can leverage this event to really make it a movement among us. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Nate. Um, and don't be a stranger. <laughs> yes. Um, yep. It was right. great to meet everybody. Thank you for thank you for listening. And I appreciate that you enjoyed the presentation. Feel yeah. free to reach out to me. Poke around the Discord. I will I will seriously preach about Discord for as long as you'll let me. So I could go till I could go till two o'clock talking about Discord. I think it's the best. <laughs> That's great. So. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, and everybody look for further information on this, but reach out to Nate if you want to know more. And and thanks for your interest and for and for your attendance. Um, is there anything else? Anybody needs to say anything? Okay, great. Thanks for the chat messages and questions. All right, everybody have a great day. Nice and, to meet uh, y'all. Yeah, go forth and digitize. <laughs> <laughs>